Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is uh, portfolio questions. The portfolio on this occasion is social justice. As ever, uh, members wishing to ask a supplementary question should press the request to speak buttons during the relevant question. And I call question number one, Annie Wells. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to address the housing emergency in Glasgow. Mr Paul McLennan. Uh, Glasgow Housing Conveners say their biggest pressure is increasing numbers of newly recognised uh, refugee households driven by home office mismanagement of the asylum process. With no additional support from Westminster, we have provided over £121 million to Glasgow to fund homelessness services and increase the supply of social and affordable homes. Homelessness pressures have been exacerbated to the UK Government's freeze of local housing allowance. I have today written to the Secretary of State ahead of the UK Budget to urge implementation of the LHA uplift in years beyond 24-25. I hope the Member will help with these calls on our colleagues at Westminster. Annie Wells. I thank the Minister for that answer. Homelessness is spiralling out of control in Glasgow, and it should never have reached the point whereby Glasgow City Council had to declare a housing emergency. And unfortunately, the work around Site Hill and the Red Road in the north of the city is moving at a snail's pace, with only a fraction of the, the demolished homes being replaced with new builds. And at the same time, we were faced with the Scottish Government, which has cut £200 million from the housing budget. Therefore, I ask the Minister what action is his government taking right now to increase the supply of affordable homes in Glasgow so that no one is left in the street? Minister. I thank the, the member for her question. I obviously mentioned that around about the £121 million we have funded Glasgow through homelessness services and increased the supply of social and affordable homes. There are a number of things I think to, that I want to mention in terms of that. The capital budget cut that we have had from our, our government it equates to 10% 10, 10 in regards to that. There are a few other things. You will be aware of the homelessness monitor that has just come out from crisis. And one of the biggest issues they talked about the increase in homelessness was through the LHA rate. And again, I will refer her back to, to the letter I have just written today and hopefully she can support that request in, in terms of that. We also have the asylum process, dispersal process. Now, it is good that the, the asylum process has been quickened up, but there is no additional funding coming from the UK Government on that, that at all. None, none whatsoever. So there are a couple of asks I would have of, of Annie Wells on that. Restore the capital budget cut. LHA uplift has to come back. In the asylum process, there has to be funding that follows that. I have also met with the housing associations on a number of occasions and through the Cities Alliance, which Glasgow is part of, are looking to bring forward some of the developments they have and working with them in terms to bring that forward as quick as we possibly can. Thank you. A couple of supplementaries. First, Jackie Dunbar. Thank you, President Officer. The Scottish Government must adopt a range of approaches to address the housing pressures, not just in Glasgow but right across Scotland. And part of this approach, I feel, should be to ensure that existing housing stock is being used effectively. Can the Minister update Parliament on work? Of where he is on the work to ensure that long-term empty homes are brought back into use, because I feel that it would go some way to address the current situation. Minister. Can I thank the member for her question? Our investment of £396,500 in 2023-24 continues support for the Scottish Empty Homes Partnership, which has worked closely with local authorities, including Glasgow, to bring back more than 9,000 homes back into use since 2010. The role of the partnership was recognised by an independent audit into the effectiveness of interventions to bring empty homes back into use that we commissioned and published last year. We have already acted on some of the audit recommendations, such as working with local authorities to improve statistics about empty homes and providing powers granting a grace period from council tax premiums for new owners of long-term empty homes. My letter of 19 September 2023 to the Local Government Housing and Planning Committee set a range of other activities we are doing to bring back more houses into use. Thank you. And Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. The Scottish Federation of Housing Association re released YouGov poll in which showed that 80 per cent of people believe we are in the grips of a housing emergency. A number of authorities have declared an emergency and there are more to follow. Now, can I ask the, the Minister why is the Government so reluctant to acknowledge what everyone else seems to see that we are in a housing emergency, fully accepting that some of the factors, as he said in his response to Annie Wells, are out with his control? But why not declare that emergency and get everyone round the table to start addressing it? Minister. Yeah, I acknowledge that we are in a difficult position at the moment. That is the same position as it is in the UK Government and, and with the, the Welsh Government. In terms of, I think in terms of the, the most important things are the actions that we take place, uh, that we undertake. As Manny Wells talked about Glasgow, I meet with local authorities on, on a regular basis and we talk about actions we, ne we need to take. Now, I think one of the key things that Mark Griffin, I would ask Mark Griffin, if there's an incoming Labour government, again, is looking at the re restoring the capital uh, budget cut. And we've already asked, and I think I've mentioned in the chamber here, about the LHA uplift rate. And again, that's something I hope that he can take back 
to incoming Labour government uh, on that. We are working very hard. We still provide £556 billion in this, the draft budget uh, so far. Now, we are trying to look at how we work closely with Glasgow, Edinburgh and other local authorities in terms of that. But the actions are the most important part that, that we undertake. And I'll, as I said, I'll continue to work as hard as I can to make sure we build houses as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you. Question two is not lodged. Question three, Michelle Thompson. To ask the Scottish Government what work is underway to ensure that eligible families across Falkirk East and the wider country are aware of and can apply for the Best Start grant before the deadline of 29th of February. Cabinet Secretary Shirley Ann Somerville. We have made it easier for families to get the Best Start grant school age payment with people in receipt of Scottish child payment now paid the school age payment automatically. There is no need to apply separately. Since November 2022, we have made over 43,000 early learning and school age payments. Some people who don't get Scottish child payment are still eligible and Social Security Scotland is actively promoting the payment across different channels ahead of the application deadline. Michelle Thompson. I, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. Now, the Best Start grant goes hand in hand with the Best Start food grant to benefit families most in need. And the most up-to-date figures show the pregnancy and baby and the Best Start food grant made up the majority of applications at 59% and 81% respectively. However, other aspects of the Best Start grant, such as the early learning payment and the school age payment, remain at 23% and 13% of applications respectively. Can the Minister confirm if the early learning payment and the school age payment continue to work on an auto award scheme if parents are in receipt of the Scottish Child Payment and what more can be done to raise awareness of these specific benefits? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the member raises a very important point, and that is about ensuring that everyone who is eligible and entitled to a benefit is encouraged, supported eh, to apply so they can get what they are entitled to. I can confirm that auto awards is in place. Early learning and school age eh, payments are a very important part of the work that we are doing on automation, making it easier for families to maximise eh, their take up. Some of the official statistics eh, that are eh, there eh, may be playing eh, catch up in terms of eh, actually showing that, eh, but we are eh, confident eh, that the automated eh, payments are working successfully in driving up take-up. Latest estimates, for example, of take-up rates indicate a significant impact of automation, with the take-up of school age payment rising from 77% in 2022 to 97% in 22-23. And of course, the agency continues to raise awareness. But I'm, of course, happy to reassure the member that this is something that we will continue to keep a close eye on. And indeed, I would encourage all members eh, to work with their constituents eh, to ensure that we can do everything that we can eh, to eh, raise awareness of both the Scottish Child Payment and the associated eh, family payments that are attached to it. Thank you. Question four, Ivan McKee. To ask the Scottish Government what it's doing to attract more working age people from the rest of the UK to come and live, work and pay tax in Scotland. Minister Emma Roddick. Thank you, Presiding Officer. We will continue to take action across government and with partners to promote Scotland as a career destination highlighting the breadth of job opportunities available across Scotland. Now, the things that set Scotland apart from the rest of the UK, such as free prescriptions and access to a world-class education system, show Scotland is a welcoming, inclusive and diverse society. As part of this approach, in 2024, the Scottish Government will launch a talent attraction and migration service to help attract, relocate and settle working age people and their families in Scotland, including people currently living across the rest of the UK. Ivan McKee. Scotland already benefits from more working age people coming to live and work here from the rest of the UK than move in the opposite direction. A modest 20 per cent increase in people moving to Scotland uh, for higher rate taxpayers has the potential to raise an additional £1 billion in income tax revenues over the course of a parliament. So can I ask what work the Scottish Government is proactively doing to attract more working age people from the rest of the UK and what results this work has delivered so far? Minister. Thank you. The member is right to, to point out the economic impact and benefit of, of having more working age people and employers are helping us to develop the talent attraction and migration service to ensure that the service can support businesses to attract those workers with the skills that are needed from out with Scotland. Our Addressing Depopulation Action Plan also outlines support for local communities and 
economies to be sustainable, including attracting the skills and people that are needed. And evidence shows that those who choose Scotland as their home do help to grow our economy, increase productivity and innovation, address skills shortages and contribute positively to communities, culture and public services. But as already stated, the unique benefits of living in Scotland do set us apart from the rest of the UK. Thank you. A number of supplementaries first. Ma'am Gozo. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Any understanding of the Laffer curve seems to escape the SNP front benches. Rather than increasing the number of taxpayers, the SNP seem hell-bent on sending them away in what has been termed the tartan exodus. One of the main deterrents to living and working in Scotland is the widening tax gap, which is also likely to impede the economic growth needed to deliver public services. When taxpayers inevitably leave, how does the Minister intend to protect spending on public services? Minister. So investment in public services, as the member says, is crucial. And that is exactly what we are doing with our progressive tax system, which asks those on the higher earning scale to pay a little bit more back into the public purse to allow us to provide the types of services that will encourage people to live and work in Scotland. Now, I think people will choose where to live based on many factors, not simply their tax bracket. Um, and I hope that the offer that we've been putting forward to people, as I've outlined in my answers to Ivan McKee, will encourage those people with the skills that we need to make their lives in Scotland. Willie Rennie. I'm genuinely puzzled. Net migration to the UK was at 750,000 last year, but the population in Scotland is projected to decline. So why does the Minister think we're not managing to attract more of those 750,000 people? Minister. I've been clear, presiding officer, um, throughout all engagements in the chamber on the, the topic of migration, that the UK's migration system does not work for Scotland. So the fact that people are not managing to move to Scotland, that they are not seeing through the routes that they're able to take to come to the UK, the unique offer that Scotland has for them is a symptom of that issue. Now, that's an issue that we are proposing a range of things to change, uh, including the talent attraction and migration system, which will allow people to be matched to uh, highly skilled jobs that they're able to take up in Scotland, but also proposing to the UK government that, for example, asylum seekers are allowed the right to work in Scotland and that the offers that are here for, for people in Scotland are communicated properly to those who are seeking a, a place that they can contribute positively to communities. And John Swinney. President Officer, can I warmly congratulate the Minister on the, the work that she's doing in relation to tackling the question of depopulation in parts of Scotland. And I think it gets to the heart of being part of a government that acts in the interests of the whole of the country. Will the Minister commit to work with other colleagues in diff with different responsibilities to ensure that we link the work on tackling depopulation to the work on economic opportunity to make sure that in some of the more isolated and remote areas of Scotland we are able to create a growing population based on good, strong economic opportunities? Minister. Yes, absolutely. Um, an exciting part of the work on addressing depopulation is the fact that it involves every portfolio across government. So I will be working with ministers with all responsibilities because we know that the drivers of depopulation and the ways that we can attract and retain people to those areas which are suffering depopulation is touches on every single area of government. So I will be working with those on the economy, on transport, on housing, on environment, uh, to make sure that we are allowing people that empowerment to remain in the communities that they grew up in, to take up skilled work in areas that are suffering depopulation, and to rebalance our population and ensure that public services can be sustainable no matter where they are. Thank you. Question five and question six were withdrawn. Question seven, Evelyn Tweed. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to ensure that people are claiming all the benefits that they are entitled to, in light of figures obtained by policy and practice showing that £18.7 billion of benefits went unclaimed across the UK in 2022-23. Cabinet Secretary. 
The Scottish Government asserts that social security is a human right and we are committed to helping people access the support that they are entitled to. Through our benefit take-up strategy, we are implementing a range of take-up initiatives, including access to independent advocacy support and targeted marketing of payments. Local delivery teams assist people completing application forms and can signpost to other information and services. This year, £12.5 million of funding for income maximisation, welfare and debt advice includes over £4.59 million to support organisations that help people access their social security entitlements and maximise their income. Evelyn Tweed. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Scottish Labour leader Anna Sarwar was recently quoted in the New Statesman saying Holyrood has been largely a social policy parliament and that he wants to correct that. With social security and benefit uptake clearly a low priority for the Labour leadership, can the Cabinet Secretary assure this chamber that, unlike Westminster, Holyrood will continue to challenge austerity and cruel measures such as the bedroom tax and the two-child cap? Cabinet Secretary. Well, this government will continue to call for an end to measures such as the bedroom tax and the two-child cap. And we will also continue to press the UK government to implement an essentials guarantee at the forthcoming UK budget. It is deeply disappointing that Labour are simply promising more of the same Tory austerity. It does not require a review, presiding officer, to know that the two-child cap and the bedroom tax are utterly inappropriate parts of any social security system. Meanwhile, this government will continue um, record investment in benefits expenditure, much of that to demonstrate our commitment to tackling poverty right across the country. And that's exactly why we are spending more than £1.1 billion more than the UK government gives to the Scottish government for Social Security, because we are there to protect the people of Scotland through continued austerity, regardless of the colour of the government at UK level. A couple of supplementaries. First, Miles Briggs. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary and the previous Cabinet Secretary said that no one would uh, lose out because of SNP changes to our social security payments. We know that's not true. The winter heating payment has left many people in the Highlands and Aberdeenshire out of pocket. So when she talks about a review, can I ask today if she will undertake a review of that policy so people living in Aviemore, Braemar and Aboyne do not continue to lose out at the hands of this SNP Green government? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I'm happy to provide in writing to Mr Briggs um, the uh, figures both for the number of people who are benefit benefiting from our winter heating payment and the investment that's going in. And what that has shown over the years, presiding officer, is that because of the vagaries of the previous Westminster system, um, there was doubt about whether people would get any money at all, how much money they would get and when. What they have now is Mr. certainty Lumsden. and what they have now is a much more substantial number of people getting that funding. That certainty and that security for uh, many more people right across Scotland is what came through in our consultation and that's exactly what we're delivering. And Paul Kane. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I think the record of the last Labour government in lifting millions of children and pensioners out of poverty through uh, uptake of social security payments and expansion of social security payments speaks for itself. But analysis from the Scottish Government published in November of last year showed that only three quarters of people had taken up young carer grants, only 61% of people had taken up the funeral support payment, which was down from the year prior, and only 15% of eligible people took up the job start payment. So can I put it to the Cabinet Secretary? Is that not just another example of the SNP? P levelling legitimate and justified criticisms at uh, the DWP, saying that they'll do things better, but actually failing to do that. Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, uh, uh, what the member is failing to point out, presiding officer, is for many of the benefits he's mentioned, they're not even available with the DWP because they've been brought in only in Scotland because we are committed to delivering for carious experienced people and the job start payment. Again, another benefit that is only available in <coughs> Scotland. So while Labour promise a review to see what they might do at some point in the future. We've already made changes to the job start payment because we recognise there is more to do on benefit take up on that. That provides, it shows a government that is not just delivering new benefits in Scotland, but is continuously adapting and improving the service that we give to the people of Scotland. And I think that action and delivery does far more for tackling poverty than the promise of a review. And question eight, Monica Lennon. 
Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking for the delivery of benefits to help families with the cost of nappies in light of the reported increase in nappy theft linked to the cost of living crisis. Cabinet Secretary. Well, we want to give children the best start in life and are using our new social security powers to make this happen. Our game-changing Scottish child payment, which is only available in Scotland, provides £25 per week per eligible child to low-income families. Best Start grant pregnancy and baby payment helps with expenses associated with pregnancy or having a new child, and families are able to use those payments to best meet their needs, which could include buying nappies. Subject to parliamentary approval, we will increase these payments and indeed all social security payments from April 2024 by 6.7%. Monica Lennon. I'm grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for that response. And notwithstanding the support that is available, we know that not being able to afford essential baby items is a reality for too many of our constituents. Nappy rationing is a horrible reality for many families with a devastating impact on babies, children and parents. Reusable nappies are well known for their environmental benefits, but they can also save families um, significant amounts of money. However, the upfront costs can be a barrier. Scotland's Baby Box does give families the opportunity to try reusable nappies, but the opt-in for this is quite low, around 14%. So can the Cabinet Secretary um, outline ways that the government can look to understand the low uptake and raise awareness and, and, and make it easier for people to use reusable products? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you. And can I begin by recognising uh, Monica Lennon's um, long-standing um, work on, on this um, issue? She's quite right to point out that the baby box uh, does raise awareness of the benefits of reusable nappies, as well as providing a nappy voucher. And the provision of the voucher is intended to help families to start using reusable nappies uh, free of charge. That voucher also signposts families to the Scottish Government Parent Club website, which highlights the benefits of using reusable reusable nappies and provides helpful advice and tips on nappy use. Uh, research has um, been commissioned by the James Hutton Institute into the barriers to reusing nappies um, and the final report is expected by the end of March. I'll be happy uh, to ensure either myself or other ministers provide uh, that information to Monica Lennon um, if she uh, does not have that to hand uh, when that um, report is uh, published. Uh, but can I also uh, ask her to join with me in, um, in the calls that we are making to the UK government about an essentials guarantee, because, presiding officer, it is not acceptable in this day and age, in this country, that we have benefit levels that cannot allow people to buy the bare essentials of life, whether that's for uh, nappies, whether that's for a uh, baby formula, if that's required. Uh, these are exactly the types of products uh, that people shouldn't be rationing, and that's why this government has asked for the essentials uh, guarantee, and I'm disappointed uh, that we have had no reply and no commitment from that from the UK government. Thank you. That concludes portfolio questions on social justice. There will be a brief pause before we move to the next item to allow uh, front benches to change.